I will take just a few seconds because we don't have longer. I, we, myself and Stefan will formulate recommendations as a result of this uh, conference. Many things have shone through clearly in, in what has been said, working together, coordinating our efforts, working differently, maybe and more intelligently, and looking for better, better models. I was particularly taken by the, uh, the ideas of uh, Tasula and, and Rosie about how to get public awareness to this in a different way, how to use modern techniques and, and maybe a media savvy presentations to uh, attract attention to this cause. Um, what I will simply ask now is um, I will be willing to share my email address um, and you can either uh, put your recommendations for this conference uh, on, the, on the Twitter there, on a hashtag culture in crisis, uh, or if you would prefer then please email them um, and I can give you my email address or I'll put it up right at the end of the, uh, the conference for those who don't have it, I'll give you my card. Um, and I'm now going to just hand over to, um, to, to Stefan Simon to, to close. Thank you, with, with Martin. Thank you, Vernon, and I promise not to take more than three to five minutes that we fit into the final minutes. And thank you, Herman, for actually leaving that space of the panel discussion. I actually had the impression at the end, if we would just continue for another hour, we would get another dozen of wonderful ideas how and in which direction we should actually go forward with this. I, I just have a few points noted over the day. I think what became clear to me is that involving the local community, but involving the community to identify actually the stakeholders of the cultural heritage and work with them is a key priority and we should be aware that that is a key priority on long term. That is not something which works on short term. Just in accordance with what the Director General of UNESCO was just calling this week, we should continue to speak out against this horrific war crime against cultural heritage on all channels, as Ms. Bokova was saying. Uh, one of them is the Unite for Heritage campaign on social media. Um, I mean, we, sh we should keep that in mind. We should definitely, as academia and museums, increase our collaboration with NGOs, IGOs. We have heard some of them today. The big question is actually who coordinates these efforts? Somebody must be there to coordinate these efforts. A natural born coordinator would be in UNESCO, definitely. How can we help UNESCO to grow into this role? Um, a point which resonates very well with what I have heard this day several times is, in fact, how can we put pressure on those who support actually terrorism and looting, how we can make this a political priority, um, how we can even enforce existing legislation to be implemented and of course, you know, not mentioning the recent uh, Security Council Resolution 21 and 99. Um, this all also in support of our colleagues on the ground, and I'm coming to my thanks, the colleagues on the ground in the affected countries. I would like to thank all colleagues who helped us to shape this conference to what it eventually became. Several of them we can't even mention because they're taking very high risks to work with us and to support us in this. And um, of course, um, that uh, comes you know, with the conclusions and recommendations that I think in our next step we should try to go with our conference into the region, into the region to, 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 to be closer to the, to the people who actually are responsible and to deal with these problems. Um, a, a point, of course, very personal from Yale University, academia, education came up very often, education and training, whether in, in response to authentication, Education is truly key, um, and beyond the cultural heritage community, it definitely involves the law schools, the business schools. Um, we should study, I think there was a recommendation of the Paris meeting in December, we should study the phenomena of cultural cleansing at greater depth. Um, we should be aware that this is not something to be dealt with in the short term. I think we're in here for a very long-term battle, which will last years, if not our lifetime. So I would like to thank you all for your very thoughtful contributions, for coming, joining us here, for engaging in this discussion, and especially my colleagues at the VNA, um, Martin, um, long-standing friend, Vernon, Matti, and the whole team uh, to host this event in, this, in the heart of this wonderful museum. Thank you very much. Yeah, when, when we started this morning, I didn't expect that you are still in 
the lecture theater at that time of the day. Thank you for this very focused, very intense discussion and information. It was really kind of tour d'horizon that we had today. And um, I really appreciate it. I appreciate that you came, come and came a long way to talk to us. Uh, thank you to all the speakers. Thank you to the panelists. Thank you to the Yale University, to Stefan, for that, yeah, as you said, long, long standing friendship and cooperation. Um, I guarantee, I promise, it's easier said than done, that this is um, not, I mean, there will be a second step. This is just the beginning. Um, I learned today that it's all about communication, but anyhow, I think communication is not all. We have to talk to other institutions, other networks in the same field. There are more conferences like this. And I also think we have to talk to other members of, or other institutions of our societies and our, in, in an international scale. Again, thank you for being here today, and I hope to see you soon again.